page two, unit seven. Growth and decay word problems. And one of my letters there didn't come through real well, so I'm gonna try and try and go over that a little bit. So uh, oh, so this little formula here, and I, and I give you a lot of information there, and we're going to kind of clean some of that up because it didn't come through great on the printer, so we'll just clean up here on the side. This is when something has growth or decay, but I'm not necessarily interested in graphing it, okay? I, I just want to get some information to be done. And so this formula... My final amounts here on the left, again, whenever you see something y of x, a of t, anything like that, we can just make it y equals, okay, if that, if that makes more sense to you. P is going to be the amount we started with, if you've done principal before, money we start with, same idea. And when we do the parentheses, we're not going to be doing plus and minus at the same time, we're going to be picking one. And so what I'm going to do here at the start, since unfortunately me trying to print something I did in color thinking that would work well, didn't work well at all. So let's, let's do a few things here. So P is how much I start with R. and I will hold my horses once I get this written down here, is the rate as a decimal, I'm going to divide the percentage by 100 if we're not used to doing that. And this basically, again, is just the stuff that we have over there to the right, except it's written larger and not fading out or going away. And so, <coughs> excuse me, once we have those three basic bits, how much should I start with? At what rate is it growing, appreciating, what's some other words I can use here? That's two good ones. Or decaying or decreasing or getting smaller yeah, that I have everything I need. Because the only places I'm going to be plugging numbers in, to be honest with most of these, is going to be here, here. Well, and then I got time over here. I should probably put T plus time. So there's three numbers I'm going to have to plug in. P, R, and T. Once I plug them in, the calculator is going to do the rest of the work for me, and I'm not going to have to do that anymore. T is time. Yeah, it's, it's little tiny T over here is an exponent, but it's there. It's there. Don't, don't almost forget it like I did there. So when I'm doing these problems, the only thing I really need to do, and I'm a big fan of labeling. You've heard me say this before. Mrs. Thorpe bought a new minivan for $30,000. Okay, that is my P. That's how much it started with when I first bought it. Well, when she first bought it. The van depreciates, becomes less in value, which means we're going to be subtracting this number at a rate of 5% per year. Now, when I see that, I'm not going to use 5 I'm going to take that 5, I'm going to divide it by 100, or some of you may have learned you just move your decimal point two places to the left. So this means my rate is 0 0.05. That's what I'm going to use in my problem. Find out how much would the van be worth after three years. There's my time. So just like I would promised at the start of this, if I know P, and I know R, and I know T, I have everything I need to do the problem. So here we go. Thirty thousand. One minus my rate. 
And then up here is my time. It's an exponent. So nothing fancy here. I'm going to grab my calculator, and I'm just going to type this in. 30,000. 1 minus 0 0.05 in parentheses. And that is an exponent. So reminder again with the exponent. There it is, right above the division sign. I press 3. I hit enter. And it looks like the van is going to be worth about $25,721.25 in three years. Because when you buy cars... As you drive them and they get more mileage, they become worth less. They depreciate. Yeah. yeah. What's that? How many miles are in Carolina? Like you have. Wait, you, wait, it's when, when people try to buy your phone with less mileage, they think the difference. Well, because it's like anything. The more you use something, the more likely it is to break down. If it has more mileage, like my car right now is pushing 160,000 miles. So it's more likely to break down than somebody who's just got driven off the lot. So that's why that is. Once we're through with a couple of examples, we'll get you there. Absolutely. So, yeah, that's why when you see cars and they come out and they're new, they're really, really expensive. But as you can see here... As for that safety, you're paying a price. So as it goes along, the price is going to keep going down. So hopefully we don't buy too many things where the price goes down because that we're losing money. So, but this can work the other way too. So example two, here's the happier way of looking at this. Mrs. Mock has $500 in her checking account. All right, so there's my P. We'll squeeze it in there. The bank pays simple annual interest. The bank pays they're giving us giving us yay interest rate of 1.05 percent okay now you're like hardy that's already a decimal why are you doing things that is not the decimal form of the rate though that is my rate that i need how much would be in her checking account after five years? So again, I'm always just going to check and see and say, okay, I got P, I got R, I got T. As long as I got those three, I'm ready to roll. So let's see here. We got 500 bucks. And I'm getting money this time. So I want to use one plus my little tiny interest rate here. Ugh. That could be better. In my time just literally plugging in to those three spots you're like dang so if I leave my money alone and I don't spend it for how long five years I got like 26 extra dollars yeah I, I kind of agree with that so, but it lets us see, really, besides having to change the rates and maybe trying to figure out by some of the words, am I going up or am I going down in value, that's what we're trying to find. So again, don't have it go too far away. This could come in handy. So I'm just going to move this to the side here for a moment. I will put it back up here momentarily. We are going to work our way into the practice packet on pages 9 and 10. Okay, the formula will still be here at the top. If you need assistance with remembering what variable is what thing, even though I don't know why that's, hang on a minute, I don't know why that says I, that's R. R, R, R. Okay. Write a function to model each situation. Make an equation. Find the amount. Okay. So when you're looking through these, and, and we'll do a couple, but I start to look and I'm like, okay, let's see here. 
I actually would go through, and the first thing I'd look for is, you know, trying to find the word <coughs> that is trying to tell me this goes up or down. So increase is tells me this is going to be going up. That's good. Starting salary, 25000 Okay, there's where we start with. Interest rate, 8%. Oops, I'm off the screen. Let's come back. What's your salary after five years? By labeling, it's getting you used to seeing what things are what. And it also lets you see where you're plugging them in as you go. So I start looking. I'm like, okay, this is an increase. So we're going to be doing plus. My percentage is a decimal. Keep life simple. And when we're doing these, I'm not going to go to all those decimal points. I mean, it depends on what I'm talking about. But here I'm talking about money. So I'm going to the nearest cent. I'd do that anytime we were talking about money. But let's say, for instance, I'm doing number five. Okay, so I look at number five. And I'm like, okay, a city of 2,950,000 people. Okay, there's my starting. Has a 2.5%. Okay, 2.5 divided by 100. Annual decrease, we're going down, people. Uh-oh, the city is shrinking. Determine the city's population after 15 years. Okay. So, I start doing my thing. Okay, how might I start with? This big old number. The one will always be there, no matter which situation I'm doing. It's going to be the sign in the middle that changes. Now, here's going to be the situation. Once I make sure I got everything typed in right, my decimal's in the right place, I got the right number of zero. Oh, wait, I don't. That's funny that I say I got the right number of zeros over here. I got one too many. That's better. Okay. Lots of numbers. Now, let's take into consideration what we're doing here. We're talking about people, the population of a city. So when I'm going to write my answer, I don't want to write this whole number in like 0 0.02. Like what would 0 0.02 of a person look like? Like a finger? We, that's, that's gross, okay? So depending on the situation, money, we do cents. We do do decimal places. People, we're doing whole people, people. So he, people, people. So round it to the nearest whole person, okay, if it's people. There's other things you can do parts of, okay? You can do parts of an acre of land. You can do that to a decimal in two places. But like people or like if they did bacteria cells or something like that you use a little common sense here on, on what that would be to try and figure that out a bit so that's all there is to growth and decay in equation form so hopefully that feels a little easier than what we were doing with some of the graph stuff um yeah so okay but you know me we got to rewind a little bit. I mean, come on now. Oh, hardy exponents again. Good gosh, man. Okay. But this is why, and this is why I post them on Classroom and I post all these videos all the time. If we need a reminder of the rules, we have them. So I'm not going to do all of these. That would be a little bit of an overkill. But let's do a couple. Um... 
Okay. So let's do let's do six, and I want to do a power to power. So let's 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 do six and three. They're right on top of each other. So let's do three first. So I look and I go, okay. When there's parentheses, there's parentheses. We're going to multiply exponents. So this two is going to the six into each of these exponents right here. So there's three places I got to move that to. So we got negative six squared. We'll talk about that in a minute. Negative four times two is negative eight. Five times two is 10. So the first thing I'm gonna deal with here is this, because you're gonna be tempted. You're gonna be like, ooh, ooh, I know. We flip negatives, but that's a negative exponents. That's not a negative number. If I put this in my calculator, negative six to the second power, I just get plain all 36. So I'm like, okay, because negative times negative is positive. Doing this in pieces instead of trying to do it all at once is helpful. But I notice there's one other thing. Because even though I didn't write it here, we kind of hopefully remember this. You can't have negative exponents in answers. It's not allowed. Mathematicians don't like it. So... If you get to the end and you see a negative number, we're going to make this a fraction to remind us that anything with a negative exponent, we need to flip. Now, if something doesn't have a negative exponent, 36 is behaving, it's positive, leave the 36 alone. It's doing what it's supposed to. But x to the negative eighth not doing what it's supposed to. It ain't feeling it here. So we're going to give it a new home down in the denominator where it's going to feel more positive. Why to the tenth? Why to the tenth happy where it's at? It's positive. So leave it alone. The only thing that flips is stuff with a negative exponent. And once that's done, I'm done. If you take it in little bite-sized pieces, it's not bad. Even this big old ugly looking crazy one down here that looks like it's gonna be awful, it's not. Because I look, I'm like, okay, let's deal with the numbers first because big numbers don't play little number rules. So let's see here, two divided by six. Ooh, it's a decimal. We don't like decimals either. Math, enter, enter. So one third. So, okay, one third. I'll tell you something else I don't like. Negative exponents. So we're going to deal with them. X to the third is happy. Leave X to the third alone. Y to the sixth, not happy. Let's make it happy. Whoop. Down to the bottom you go. We already dealt with the numbers, so I don't have to worry about that. X to the negative fourth is not happy down below. Well, let's make it happy. Boop, up to the top it goes. It'll be happy then. Okay, that's how we make negative exponents happy. We flip them to the other side. But if they're content, if they're happy, if they're positive already, leave them alone. So I flipped the y to the negative 6 down, it became positive. x to the negative 4th, we flipped up. And so now, my last bit of business, because I see double x and I see double y, okay? If you're multiplying variables together, you add the exponents. So 3 plus 4 is 7. And down below... 6 plus 3 is 9. And we're done. And we're set. And we're finished. All the things that we needed to do, we got done. So, as far as the exponents go, again, pull these out. If you don't have them, take a little time. Go back to the front page of Classroom. They're sitting right there.
and you can get these updated and maybe have some help along with the answers that you've got here. Now I'm trying to think. Do I tackle seven or eight? Um, seven we've just been doing for two days. I'm not going to tackle seven, but I am going to tackle eight. I'll tackle eight, and then I will get out of the way. Unless I need it. Then I'll get back in the way. Okay, graph the system. Reminders, people. Bless you. If graphing is still an issue, hopefully you still have your unit six notes and can go back over it. If not, you have two options here. One of them is to kind of watch here and kind of play with it and see how it goes. There's my y-intercept. y-intercept, y-axis, negative 3. Here's my slope. I'm going to be going up 1 and right 2. And up 1 and right 2. And if I run out of room and I still want to make dots... I go down one, I do the opposite, I go left two. You're like, do I just make the line hardy? No. No, because I still would need to go back if I didn't into my unit six notes. If I've gotten rid of them, you need to find them. No line underneath. dotted line through there. And when y is greater than, we shade above the line. So, a few, few lines. I don't have to go crazy with it. If you and graphing lines are not friends, you can absolutely go into your calculator, go into y equals where we were doing our graphing for the past couple of days, Type it in and use the chart 0, negative 3, 2, negative 2, 4, negative 1, and get the points you need, negative 2, negative 4, to make the line. That's legal, but you got to pick one at this point. Picking nothing just kind of gives you nothing. And I can do the same thing here. Negative 1 is my y-intercept. Ooh, if it's negative, you know, what's up with that? You're only putting the negative on one number. So, I like to put it on the top number. That's just me. So, that would mean I'm going down and I'm going right. So down, right, down, right. I got enough points. Line underneath. We're going to have a solid line through those values because of the line underneath. But it still is eating y just like this one was. So we're going to be above the line. And then to finish, I need to make sure I show who's looking at it. Hey, where did they, you know, overlap? Not where it's just red. Not where it's just purple. But, oh, oh, that's kind of dead. That's not going to work for me. I'll try this one. Okay, let's see if this one's better. Maybe. Uh, oh, yeah, that's better. Okay. So this area here where I'm seeing red and purple, that's, that's my solution area where I'm looking for. But again, as always... Practice might not make perfect, but dang, it makes a whole lot better. So if you do that, check answers, not copy answers from Hardy's Keys, because all that's going to do is get you 10% of a really good grade and 90% of a really bad one. We want to flip that. So if we do both, we'll get into the right places on things.